What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be exploring some of the best travel and hiking destinations in the United States. The U.S. is filled with national parks, state parks, monuments, national forests, BLM land, and an infinitely long list of places to travel to. But there's a reason why so many people flock to the national parks. They're amazing. And I mean a lot of people. The national parks get roughly 300 million visits annually. In this video, I will be sharing my favorite parks with you, but it's worth noting that I will only be talking about parks in the lower 48, so this video is going to exclude Hawaii and Alaska. Real quick, if you could hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, I'd love you forever. But let's dive right in. This is my top 10 USA national parks. First up, we have Zion National Park, which is my favorite of Utah's Mighty Five National Parks. It's located in Springdale, or just under an hour from St. George, in southwest Utah. Zion Scenic Drive cuts right through the center of its beautiful steep red cliffs. This place is filled with a handful of some of my favorite hikes, and even a hike that's dubbed the scariest hike in North America, and that is Angel's Landing, which is 4.3 miles with roughly 1,800 feet of elevation gain. And after the switchbacks, you have the famous change section, which is a narrow strip of trail with thousand foot cliff drops on both sides of you. And a few other classic hikes to do here include the Narrows, Zion Canyon Overlook, Emerald Pools, Court of the Patriarchs, and the Watchman Trail. And if you're looking for something off the beaten path to do here, Colop Canyon in the northwest section of the park is a must. At number two, we have Glacier, which is one of my all-time favorite parks. It's filled with beautiful aqua blue alpine lakes, towering mountain peaks, glaciers, and all sorts of wildlife. Glacier is located in northern Montana, just under the Canadian border. This park also has a handful of family-friendly options and places to just hang out at, like Lake McDonald, Logan Pass, Jackson Glacier, and St. Mary's Lake. But there's also a never-ending amount of insanely beautiful hikes like Cracker Lake, Iceberg Lake, Grinnell Glacier, and the Highline Trail, and so much more. It's a great place for climbing peaks, but the rock is loose and the peaks are technical, but there's just such a range of things to do here. Next up is Yellowstone, which is one of the most touristy parks in the country, but also one of the most unique and amazing ones. Yellowstone is home to the famous Old Faithful Geyser, which erupts at predictable intervals every single day. It's also home to Grand Prismatic Spring, which to me looks like it could quite possibly be the heart of our planet. The colors are just so rich and beautiful. But there's also so much more to Yellowstone than these iconic places. While you're here, you also need to check out Norris Geyser Basin, Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, and Black Sand Basin. Black Sand Basin, we saw one of the most beautiful sunset of our lives here. Here. But like I said, if you're coming here, definitely make sure you save some time to check out other places other than Old Faithful and Grand Prismatic. After Yellowstone, we're just going to drive an hour or two south and reach our next destination, Grand Teton National Park. The hub for this park is the town of Jackson. You can drive here from Salt Lake City to the south, Denver from the east, or my favorite, from Idaho to the west. If you drive from Idaho, you get to go through Teton Pass, which is a great place for backcountry skiing and snowboarding, and a great place for photography. Once you enter the park, you'll be greeted with surreal views of the Tetons. The most famous peak here is obviously Grand Teton, but some other notable peaks are Middle Teton, South Teton, Tiwanak, and Mount Moran rising high above the lakes below. My favorite hikes here include Delta Lake and Lake of the Crags, but if you're looking for some easier hikes or just some great destinations, you should check out Hidden Falls, Jenny Lake, and Taggart Lake. Also, Schwabacher Landing is a great place to see as well. Hopefully I pronounced that right. We'll see if I get roasted in the comments, who knows? But in both the Tetons and Yellowstone, there's wildlife, so please keep this in mind. Keep your distance to respect the animals and just enjoy seeing them from a distance. One last unique thing to do here is to take a scenic flight around the Tetons from Jackson Hole's airport. It's a surreal experience and you can also fly over Yellowstone if you'd like. And really quick, I'd like to hop in here and mention that I have a top 10 hike and travel guide for a handful of these parks on my channel. So while this is a great overview for some of the best parks in the country, if you're looking for more detailed travel guides with individual hiking specs and places that are accessible and family friendly, those can be found on my channel. There are dozens and dozens of top 10s that can help you plan your trips. But next up is gonna be Yosemite National Park, which just might be the most famous national park in the country, especially now after the documentary Free Solo came out. Yosemite Valley boasts some of the most impressive granite cliffs in the country, which the notable peaks involves here being El Cap and Half Dome, both of which have iconic rock climbing routes, but you're also able to hike to the top of both of them. Although for Half Dome, you will need a permit because the hiking route is via the cables, which have a permit system set in place. If you're not looking to hike, some great places to visit are Glacier Point, where you'll have stunning views of Half Dome. It's a great spot for 
for Sunset, and then also Vernal Falls and Nevada Falls. Taft Point is another great destination, and of course, Bridal Veil Falls and Tunnel View. Really, everything you're gonna do here is incredible, and even just the drive through the park and through the valley is awesome. At number six, we have Mount Rainier in Washington State. Rainier is one of the most unique mountains in the country. It stands tall at 14,410 feet above sea level, towering over every single other mountain in the area. Washington State is home to the Cascades and the Olympic Mountains, a never-ending amount of jagged and steep mountain peaks, but Rainier stands above them all, and on a clear day, you can see Rainier all the way from Seattle. It's a great backdrop to the skyline, and it's a glaciated volcano, so there will be snow on the mountain year-round. My two favorite hikes in the park are Mount Fremont Fire Lookout, which is a great sunset hike that's 5.7 miles round trip with just over a thousand feet of elevation gain and my other favorite hike is Myrtle Falls and this one is less than a half mile round trip so it's a very easy and quick stop and this is also a great area to see wildflowers. Next up, at number seven, we're gonna be heading to Northern Arizona for Grand Canyon National Park. I feel like this list wouldn't be complete without including this bucket list location. The Grand Canyon is one of the most special places in the world. It's no wonder millions of people travel here every single year. The Grand Canyon has an unfathomable amount of layered bands of red rock that showcase millions of years of geological history. Over millions of years, water carved out the canyon through water's tremendous erosive power. And while the Colorado River flows through seven states, as it flows through the Grand Canyon, it's home mostly to Arizona. There are tons of roadside pull-offs to enjoy the Grand Canyon, but if you're looking for something a little bit more intense and adventurous, you can check out the Bright Angel Trail or North Kaibab Trail, which will take you all the way to a white sand beach at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. It's almost a 20 mile day, but man, this is such an amazing experience. The Grand Canyon is also home to the Hopi Salt Trail, which is a place that much less people know about, and it is outside of the National Park boundary, but the Hopi Salt Trail is a very long and difficult hike. It takes you to the bottom of the Little Colorado River and the Colorado River where they meet for the confluence. While this hike is just a few miles outside of the park, it's still very much a part of the Grand Canyon, so I thought it was worth noting. And it's a part that few people make it to, might I add, because it is very remote. I have a very detailed travel guide on everything you need to know for this place, so I'll link that in the caption if you'd like to see. Next up, we're in New England and on the coast of Maine with Acadia National Park, a region quite possibly home to the most beautiful fall foliage in the world. But this park has so much more to see, like Cadillac Mountain, where during October to March, you are the first person in the entire country to see the sunrise, which is pretty cool if you ask me. And there's also a handful of places along the park drive that have beautiful coastline viewpoints where you can just hang out, watch the waves and the tide come and go. Good stops for this are Schooner Head Overlook, Sand Beach, and Thunder Hole, just to name a few. My all-time favorite hike in the park is the Precipice Trail and the Beach. Hive Trail. You can hike these separate if you like, but if you're up for a few additional miles, you can hike them together as one big point-to-point -point hike. These hikes ascend the mountains of Acadia, and you're climbing the rock with the assistance of iron rungs in the rock. It's pretty exhilarating, and maybe not for those that have a fear of heights, but if you'd like adventure, then this trail is for you. It's almost a mixture of hiking and a via ferrata, where you don't actually need any gear. And it's worth noting that the town for the park, Bar Harbor, is stunning and a great destination on its own. At number nine, we're heading back to Utah, but this time we're going to Moab and we're going to Arches National Park. Arches is such a unique place. There's more than 2,000 documented arches in the park, plus pinnacles, balanced rocks, and other kind of geological formations. It's beautiful, but the best time of day here is golden hour, where the entire park lights up pink and orange. Arches is great for landscape photography and hikers, but it's also an extremely family-friendly park, and you don't need more than a weekend here to see the best places this park has to offer. You could even see quite a bit if you only had one day. One hike you have to do while visiting here is Delicate Arch, a 3.2 mile hike with 600 feet of elevation gain. And you'll also have to do Double Arch, which is less than a mile round trip from the car. And if you're looking for other great places to see and hikes to do, you should check out the Windows, Tourette Arch, Sand Dune Arch, Landscape Arch, and Park Avenue. Last up, but certainly not least, is in my now home state of Colorado, and that is Rocky Mountain National Park, which is just over an hour outside of Denver. Rocky Mountain is one of my favorite national parks and holds a special place in my heart. It's one of the first national parks I went to and probably one of the places that sparked my hiking career. There are some national parks where you can see the best of the best without hiking and just by driving, for example, Yosemite. But Rocky Mountain is not one of those places. Sure, there are a few amazing places that are less than a two mile hike, like Dream Lake, Emerald Lake, and Bear Lake, but if you really wanna see the best 
places this park has to offer, you need to plan for some pretty big hiking days. Some of the best places in my opinion are seven to 14 mile hikes, if not longer. And this includes Sky Pond, Andrews Glacier, Chasm Lake, just to name a few. You can also take a scenic drive on Trail Ridge Road, which is the highest continuously paved road in the United States, crossing the Continental Divide at 12,183 feet above sea level. Rocky Mountain is also home to Long's Peak, which is the only mountain in the park that stands above 14,000 feet. It's likely the most famous 14er in the entire state with a hiking route to the summit and hundreds of rock climbing routes. That's gonna wrap up this video. It's worth noting that this list is relative and everyone has their own opinion. These are just my favorites after traveling the national parks for the last eight years. A few of my other favorites include Big Bend, Death Valley, and the Great Smoky Mountains. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and got a few ideas for your next road trip. Like I mentioned, on my channel, I have dozens of travel guides and top tens for some of these parks individually and just other places in general. So check those out. And if you haven't already hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, that would mean the world to me if you could. But anyways, I will see you later. Thank you so much for watching.